Hello Tangerines from the Pueblo Magico Tequisquiapan in Querétaro, Mexico. So Tequisquiapan is about an hour's drive away from Querétaro. I've been wanting to come check this little town out since before we even got to Querétaro two months ago. One of the main features is this beautiful church that's behind me which unfortunately looks like it's under construction right now so you can't really see it in all of its glory but it's kind of pink and has all these unique designs on it. Still looks pretty awesome. It was just last week that we were telling you in Querétaro, it seems like most people stopped caring about masks and a lot of people had stopped wearing them. But here, that is not the case. Despite being an hour away, it seems like almost everyone out and about is wearing their mask. Even putting it below the nose, I feel weird because people are wearing them properly here. Okay, now we're talking. This is a Mercado de Artesanías. So it has all the handicrafts and the special products from Tequisquiapan. I'm so excited, it's my favorite part of any city. And the great thing is now we can go in here and shop to actually buy things because we have a home now. So for the first time in all of our travels in Mexico, we can start decorating and buying local products. Ah, I'm so excited. We did walk all around that, that Artesanias market, but we were told not to record, which is kind of a buzzkill, especially when there's no signage saying don't record, but I did get a little bit of sneak footage so you could see a little insight as to what that looks like in there. walk all the way across the street to get to this next Artesanias market and I really like it in here there's things made out of like straw would you say or like woven baskets and things lots of things made out of wood of course typical Lele dolls that are from Querétaro and everything in between to stop into this place called Rio 33 for a quick refuel. Gracias. Por nada. ¿Cuáles son los quesos? Son quesos de la región y son cuatro tipos de chipotle, manchego, con nuez y hierbas finas. We had to go with queso because it's really typical of this region, but in addition to cheese, we also got some winemaking material. <laughs> So, see us back here in about, I don't know, six to 12 months, two years maybe, depending on how good we want the wine to be. But yeah, he was telling us that there's cheese with pecans, with fine herbs, there's a chipotle, and then probably manchego. manchego. So this is all from the region, and then also comes with olives, some meat, and pecans, and olives, I already said that. <laughs> but can you tell I love olive, all of them. All of them a lot. <laughs> Let's give this a try though. This is the one with pecans. I've never had cheese with pecans in it. That's pretty good. Two thumbs up so far. So now I've tried a few more. I really like this one with chipotle and the one with fine herbs, hierbas finas. This has a really nice flavor to it. And the manchego is very light. The one with pecans, very light. It's not like a sharp or uh, pungent cheese, nothing like blue cheese. Or... You know, I think that's been the case for all Mexico cheeses that I've tried. Or the, it seems to be an area where they make pretty light tasting cheese. You don't find many pungent cheeses here. Yeah, except for maybe queso de cabra, but I think that's pungent just because <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> 
so this is probably not the cheapest cheese platter, cheese assortment that you Peso. can... Queso. Okay, Queso. So. <laughs> but 320 pesos, probably not the cheapest that you can find around Tiki's Giapan since this is cheese and wine country. However, I think it's a really nice assortment. We can mi mix and match the fruit, the cheese, the nuts, the meat uh, to our preference and it tastes really good. And this is a really nice restaurant too. I like the ambiance out here on the patio with the tree rolling through the roof right behind me. We are just about to finish up with this cheese plate and I have to say one last thing on the topic. In case of emergency, por ejemplo, your blood sugar is getting low or you don't know where to go in Tiki's Giapan, I do recommend coming here and getting this cheese plate because it's super good. <laughs> you have some cheesy jokes today. <sighs> Thank you, that's so good of you to notice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here all day. So Rio 33 is also a hotel and we came into the back to go to the bathroom but we noticed this place structure here. I've never seen anything like it. It's made of wood. I know I would have loved this as a kid. <laughs> oh my gosh. So right outside of this restaurant is where we parked the car which looked like public parking. There's no meters, no numbers, but there's a sign that says estacionamiento en batería and I've never heard that before. It translates to in battery so we asked our server does that mean we have to pay? Are we gonna get towed? Is this free parking? And he's like, uh, the truth is, I have no idea. So maybe you guys know what the heck does en batteria mean. <laughs> he did say it was free parking though. Yeah, free parking. Yeah. Public parking. He just didn't know what it meant. In just about every city and town throughout Mexico, you see a colorful sign with the city's name, but they forgot to include the rest of the sign. Call the police, there's been a robbery. Quiapan is gone. Quiapan. <laughs> 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 so far though, I think this Pueblo Mágico is really cool. It's, it's super walkable, so we're just kind of walking around, um, poking into the shops, of course, seeing the artesanías, looking at all the restaurants with wine and cheese that I want to go in but I'm full, <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully all the walking will create room. But yeah. it's really quaint, it's a beautiful day. I think it's a high of 78 today. Mm -hmm. It's sunny, there's a little bit of a breeze. I, I, it's think it's, I think it's a really pretty town and someday we're gonna have to come back and do like the Ruta de Quesos and Vino then oh, yeah. Arte. Yeah, and maybe we just bumped into Ruben again. R Ruben, our driver that we told you about that took us around for a city tour. He was taking somebody else around to here, Peña de Bernal and mm -hmm. some of the, the wineries. I think that sounds like an awesome idea to avoid all the drinking and driving. Yeah, that sounds fun. I'm sorry, does that say helado de vino? Because sign me up. If you're coming to Mexico, one thing I think you're gonna find really helpful is a VPN because you might be watching your favorite Netflix shows in the US or in Canada and then you come here and a lot of those shows are going to disappear from Netflix because in every country it's a different library of shows and movies. But what you can do is you can activate a VPN with a click of a button and locate yourself in the US or in Canada or wherever you wanna be and then boom, Netflix will work for you again and you can watch your favorite shows. If you'd like to check out our favorite VPN, you can find it at tangerinevpn.com. That's our affiliate link and it will take you right to the website. Right now they're running a sale, it's 83% off plus three extra months free. Again, that's tangerinevpn.com. We're here in Tequisquiapan on a Tuesday and it seems like pretty tranquil, pretty relaxed. I'm guessing this gets a lot busier on the weekends because a lot of things have been closed, like going into a market, a lot of the stalls are closed, things like that. And it just seems uh, pretty sparse with people throughout the town. And usually we would consider that a good thing because we don't have to fight the crowds, we don't have to worry about finding parking and various other things that come with lots of people being in a place. But I think what also comes with that is now we don't really know what to do because there's not a whole lot going on right now. I feel like this is maybe more of a town where you do like the little day trips, you go check out the cheese making, you go to a vineyard, something like that. Yeah, and we were originally, when we were planning to come here before going to Querétaro, we were going to stay for a whole week. I think we might have been bored, honestly. <laughs> Supposedly 78 degrees right now, but in the sun, 78 has never felt so hot. 
There's this cheese store that I really want to go to here since they make the cheese locally. This particular one I heard has over a hundred different kinds of cheese and you get to try a bunch of them. So I'm hoping that's still the case during COVID, but we're gonna go check it out. Jordan, I love how you pointed out that this is the happy cow. And in this case, unlike Pollo Felice, where they're killing the chickens in order to like roast them and serve them to you, the cows actually are happy because they get to live. You're just taking their milk <laughs> to make cheese. <laughs> Queso, estilo francés. Okay. Leche de vaca, se llama por salud. Tiene siete meses de maduración. Por salud. Con el granito de mostaza. Mm. Oh, I like that. Está muy bueno. So it has mustard seeds. It has a good flavor to it. Es un manchego a la cerveza, estilo alemán. Madurado okay. en un barril de cerveza oscura. So this one, manchego, cooked with beer. Or made with beer. Oh. Do, do you taste the beer? I don't think so. Es como queso azul? No. No? Okay. They're all really good so far. I think my favorite is the first. It reminded me of like a cheddar, like a sharp cheddar. Yeah, so you were afraid of this one because you can see some blue in it and you hate blue I cheese. I can't stand blue cheese. <laughs> but it doesn't taste like that mm -hmm. at all. All of these are very smooth. Mm -hmm. Like they're very, like the meltable type cheese. Tres leches. Tres leches. Okay. Gracias. Eso tiene menos grasa que los otros. Cualquiera de estos son bajos en grasa. También tengo esta. Esta es una provolina ahumada de leche de búfala. La leche de búfala es baja en grasa, es baja en sal y es alta en proteína. Gracias. Leche de búfala. Leche de búfala. What do you think? It's the lightest of all them. Yeah. Definitely least amount of that. So after trying a whole bunch of cheeses, we're getting the very first one we tried, Port Salud, with mustard seeds. And then this one is actually a sheep's cheese with like uh, hierbas finas or fine herbs in it. And this one was awesome. I love this. Except on las tarjetas. Sí, claro. Okay. Gustan probar el rompope, algún licor. Oh, rompope. <laughs> 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 Don't tempt me. Ah, sí, ¿por qué no? Es un rompope artesanal elaborado aquí en Tequisquiapan, es con los de macadamia. Este lo puede degustar en las rocas, en un frappé, un falso cappuccino, una gelatina, un helado de vainilla. Oh, ¿y tiene ron o...? No. ¿Hay alcohol? Ah, Muy poco alcohol. Ok. It's good, it's good. So this is, rompope translates to eggnog, I believe. And it's pretty thick, you can taste that there's a little bit of alcohol in there. It's pretty tasty. Oh yes, you can taste the alcohol, but it's sweet, not too sweet. Mmm. It's actually here in Tequila. Oh, wow. Hay gorditas de nata. Oh, there's just so much good stuff in this. <laughs> <laughs> so our bright idea is that next time we come back to Tequisquiapan, it's going to be on the weekend, and we are going to check out a vineyard or one of the cheese-making facilities mm -hmm. or take some type of a tour around here because I think that's where a lot of the magic is. Yeah. The magic in the Pueblo Magico. <laughs> <laughs> on the screen here, though, we have a playlist of other Pueblos Magicos or magic towns that we've been to across Mexico, and they are all special for some reason or another. Before you go, please hit that subscribe button so you see future videos. And go! that bell so you get notified the next time we release a new video on Saturday. Mm -hmm.